हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल फिजिक्स ट्रिक्स सो लास्ट वीडियो में हमने देखा था केपलर्स लॉज के बारे में राइट सो अब हम देखेंगे न्यूटन्स यूनिवर्सल लॉ ऑफ ग्रेविटेशन दैट इज द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द ग्रेविटेशन चैप्टर ओके सो नाउ विल स्टार्ट विथ न्यूटन्स यूनिवर्सल लॉ ऑफ ग्रेविटेशन राइट सो दिस इज द न्यूटन्स यूनिवर्सल लॉ ऑफ ग्रेविटेशन न्यूटन्स universal law of gravitation okay so this is the newton's universal law right what does that mean this law is applicable to entire universe you can say right so what it states actually it states that if we have two masses m1 and m2 and the distance between these two masses is given by let us suppose distance between the centers of these two masses is given by capital r okay so we have two masses and the distance between these two masses is capital r now what this universal law of gravitation states is that the force of attraction between these two masses is directly proportional to the product of their masses that means first statement is like this force of attraction f is directly proportional to the product of their masses that is m1 and m2 and second statement is like this and it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and this is called as inverse square law square of the distance between then so this is the first equation and this is the second equation right so every object in this universe attracts every other object with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them this is the simple statement of newton's universal law of gravitation now if we combine this 1 and 2 so we can write from from 1 and 2 we can write f is directly proportional to m1 m2 by r square right now if you wanted to remove this proportionality sign we have to introduce some constant isn't it so whenever there is a proportionality sign we have to introduce some constant and from this we can we get so f is equal to some constant and that constant is given as capital g m1 m2 by r square now this capital g is nothing but universal gravitational constant and the value of capital g is invented by or is discovered by uh, henry cavendish there is a scientist whose name is henry cavendish who invented the value of capital g and the capital g value is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 And the unit is very simple. See here, capital G unit is Newton meter square per kg square. Newton meter square per kg square. So this is the Newton's universal law of gravitation. So this is the simple statement. This this force is nothing but the magnitude of the force, right? Now there are certain properties of this universal law. Of gravitation is there now what are those properties see here from this equation we can say if we have two masses and as we know gravitational force is always attractive force it's never be repulsive isn't it so if you have the body supposed to be this body and if i release this body from this point right so it will be attracted towards the center of the earth right so that center of the earth that center of the earth is always 
center of the earth always attractive force right it gives always a attractive force that attractive force is nothing but the gravitational force so this is the first property right so first property is about this force is always attractive force right so first property we can write over here property properties of this force and first property in this is it is always attractive force second property this force is a central force right so this force is a central force what does that mean this means that it always acts along it always acts along the line joining between the two centers of the masses this is the force direction this force is always act along this line that that joins these two masses to be exact that joins the centers of these two masses right so this is the central force third property is that it is a conservative force now what does this mean it is a conservative force means if you lift a body from point a this is the point a to point b by this path by this path or by this path you choose any path you want right but if you raise the object it will take only one path and that is the straight line path isn't it so if you take if you take any object and if you take that object to that b point and release that object what will happen it will take only one path and that is the straight line path and that is why it is a conservative force what is the definition of conservative force the force which does not depends on the path taken that is called as conservative force okay so next property is it obeys the inverse square law and this is the fourth property it obeys the inverse square law right so and this is this is actually taken from the kepler's law that we will see in next video okay so this is actually taken from the kepler's law right okay so this is the inverse square law it obeys the inverse square law fifth property is <coughs> now fifth property is it does not this property is very important it does not depends on the medium in which this force is taken right so this this force does not depends on the medium what does that mean if we have two masses let us suppose these two masses right and if you take the force of attraction between these two masses in air and in water right that force of attraction is always remains same right so if we have two masses m1 and m2 and that force of attraction between these two masses if you take in air and in water keeping the distance and masses are same then this force is independent on the medium the surrounding medium so this force is independent on surrounding medium okay so this force is independent on the surrounding medium so this these properties are very important it is a attractive force it is a central force it is a conservative force it is it obeys the inverse square law it is independent on the intervening medium and if you place any other see this means what if you place any other object in between any other mass in between these two masses let us suppose i am considering the mass m3 suppose over here or 
mass m4 over here the force of attraction between this mass and this mass is always remain same and that is how much f is equal to g m1 m2 by r square right net force on this object will change but individual that due to m1 on m2 remains same so this point is very important right so if anyone ask you what is the if firstly force of attraction between m1 and m2 is 10 newton and if i place the m3 or m4 object in between these two masses now what is the force of attraction the answer for this question is 10 newton only why because this m1 and m2 force is independent on the intervening medium or intervening objects right so this is very important right and problems on this newton's universal law of gravitation as well as the derivation of this inverse square law we'll see in next video thank you for watching this video if you like this video subscribe it and press the bell icon for new updates